what I'm yeah. doing is okay. I'm reading the text. You're reading the text. You've seen two text, contradictory statements. Yes, there's descriptions. And I totally, and it's a good, another example why a person of the 21st century who actually reads the text is going to actually not get the fullness of the textual meaning because he's reading it as someone who's got 21st century eyes no, no, okay. this is another and one needs to understand how the te texts and quotations are used this is, this is another example in, okay. in, in hebrews can i actually do what i wanted to do yeah, which was so let me just add to this yeah. in, he in hebrews paul we don't even know who the author is first and foremost i'm assuming it's paul because we, scholars are telling us we don't know who Let's not worry is. about it right now. It's important because no. whoever is... I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. When you're speaking to a Catholic, yes. if the Catholic Church has said, this is the inspired word of God, yeah. Mickey Mouse could have written it. Yeah. Don't that's an issue though. That's, that's a big issue. It is, a, it's, a, it's academically a issue. an issue. But when you, you see, I know that we haven't gone into why the Catholic Church is, is this great authority today. But let's park okay. that. Because let, otherwise, you know, okay. in Hebrew, let's just say, yeah. There's a verse which has clearly changed in, in Psalms. There's a verse in Psalms. I'll give you that verse. In Psalms it says, and this is what sort of kind of... Um, it may well be an example of what I was describing. Yes, yeah, sacrifice. This is in Psalms uh, 40 verse 6. It says, sacrifice and offerings you did not desire. Mm -hmm. But my ears you have opened. Yeah. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Yeah. Now there's no mention of, of a Jesus. body. A yes. body you've given. Oh, but, but, yes, in Hebrews, in Hebrews it yeah. says sacrifice and offerings you did not desire. And then a verse has been added. Yes. It says, but a body but you prepared, prepared for, me. for me. Yes. Now who gives the authority to the yeah. person we don't even know who wrote Hebrews to put that yeah. there? Yeah. Firstly, um, even if I'm right about this um, rabbinic approach yes. to the to quotation of scripture and how you can, how it's, I'd say, kind of plastic and you can manipulate it, but um, the that wouldn't be legitimate unless we said, unless we had a belief system which involved saying God Himself um, authorizes this and is behind this, because we believe it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes. This particular rabbinic approach gives us correct information about what God is saying to us in the first century AD when Paul is writing. But of course, you're not a believer in that, so you just see a, an addition of something which wasn't there. And I totally get that. I totally get that. That's why we can't get very far until we've established whether this religion is true or not. And that's another thing. And then, But having got to that point, um, on the basis of Catholicism being true, this thing is fine. This this um, divergence of one verse from um, in the Old Testament as compared to what's in the New Testament, but it's based upon finding Catholicism to be true, and that foundational uh, requirement. It is because if Catholicism is true and it says that this verse is inspired by the Holy Spirit, it's in a book inspired by the Holy Spirit, then there's no problem. But you can't know that the Catholicism isn't true. And so could you sit, stand here? Because the ca it's all right, the camera's just there. Um, no, it's all right, mate. It's all right, it's just a reason. Um, so we'd have to go into why Catholicism is true to I get to the point. I statement. I'll tell you why it's because it's true. Because 1 John 5, 7 and 8, mm. it clearly tells us there's a verse which says, I'm paraphrasing, it's not exactly, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are one. Well, in King James the Version, the Wait, you're thinking of, you're thinking of the, the Johannine comma, which was inserted, inserted brought yes. in about the 9th century AD. Yes. It's been removed and footnoted or completely removed because it didn't belong in the early manuscripts. I mean, when you get to the 9th century AD, that's all I'm saying, it's quite clear. That's, it's not only one verse. The resurrection in uh, the resurrection. You're thinking of Mark, Mark, end of Mark. End of Mark the adulterous woman there are many 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 verses now actually these ones though no, the, the difference between them and the Johannine comma is that they are ancient and they are in very ancient manuscripts and the question is for scholars do they does for example the last few verses of mark belong with mark again when we get and, and does the the the, the um, stoning adulterous. the would be stoning of the adulterous woman belong in john that question is, is resolved for catholics because if the church says this is in the inspired word of God and it belongs in here, then by the power of the church, we have no further problem. Those people in the church, are they inspired by, the, by God? That's where we get to the question of how we know Catholicism is true. 
and that's 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 another discussion we can okay, go put into. That, put that, put that, put John 578. That yeah. has been inserted. Yes, so for six, absolutely. So from the 9th century to the 1970s, when the NIV was introduced, that period of time, hmm. Christians were believing that this was the word of God. That verse was the word of God. Absolutely, so absolutely. Except scholars. Scholars would not have it in their, in their study material. They'd know it was actually an addition from the 9th century. But in the G King James Bible, that was printed and massively spread around the world, yes. they just left it there. And that's their business, I suppose, but that's their choice. They're, that's not the Catholic Church. I can't answer for other people, right? So who's... We don't use a King James. Sorry? We don't use a King James. Yeah? Again, I, for me, Christianity, your foundation, whether you are Protestant or Catholic, it's the, it's the church. So it's the, it's the Bible. I know, I'm making you a Catholic now, aren't you? Thinking like, no, when you no, said no, it's the church. It is the Bible. Because my, my, my friend, the, 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 you're wrong. Friend, friend, let me tell you, let me quote, let me quote the Bible itself. 1 Timothy 3.15. Listen to what the Bible says. The St. Paul saying, the pillar and foundation of truth is the Bible. Oh, sorry, no, sorry. Is the church. The pillar and foundation of truth is the church. Now, if he's saying that and that's in the Bible, what can we say? Listen, let's agree to disagree. No problem. 